Hey guys, um, we're back at it on the WD-45. Um, this is the piece I was working on on the mill. This is what's going to sit um, up in the bottom of the sleeve to, to help pull it out. Um, I'll have some uh, blocks to use for risers and a strap across the top and then a piece of three quarter inch all thread going through all that through this with a nut on top and hopefully that will just lift the sleeves out. I don't know, this is the first time I've ever pulled sleeves on an engine, so hopefully that'll work. Okay, this one's number three. This is the one where we had our leak, so I'm curious to see what this one looks like. Well, we found it. That's it right there. If I can get the light right, you can kind of see just a little trail right there where it's had coolant running down the outside. So, that's our culprit.
Okay, so all four of the liners are out. Um, she's got a bit of junk down in there. We'll get that cleaned up. But I'm gonna. It's getting dark, but it's not totally dark yet. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot left holding the engine in, so I'm gonna roll this outside and see if I can get the block lifted out and put on the engine stand. Okay, we've got the engine separated from the bell housing. Um, however, um, I was hoping there was enough room to get it out around the old um, crank start shaft, but obviously there's not. So I'm going to have to get that out of the way so I can get this out of here. Well, guys, it's out. Um, I think this is as far as I'm going to go tonight. Um, it's getting late. We've got to be on the road early in the morning for a family event this weekend. So, um, show you what, or, I mean, there's not much else to see here. Um, I did, I did mic the, uh, journals. Um, the rod journals anyway are 10 undersized, so the crank has been ground at one time. Um, so I, and after talking with, uh, or chatting with Mike in the comments on the last video, Mike Jensen, he, uh, he suggested that it's possible that this has, or that the pistons in this are actually like a later style, like for a, a D17 or a 170 to where they would be a higher compression ratio, but still the same same stock bore diameter and that makes a lot of sense because it uh compression on this did test a lot higher than what the than what the book said was normal for these engines um the wd-45 manual anyway uh, but i want to show you what i have going on with the clutch um this is the disc that came out of it and i knew i had this issue right here because I found this piece and this spring laying on the inspection cover last year when I went to grease the throw out bearing. Um, so I knew about this issue. I've already got a new clutch disc. Um, the other issue I found though is this. Um, these two fingers have the return spring here and this one is missing its spring. I had it. Ah, here it is. This is the spring that goes on that one. It was laying in the bell housing. Uh, this little tab right here is broken off of it. So that's unfortunate. I was not expecting that. Um, but I also thought that this had a nine spring pressure plate in it instead of a six. So now may be the time to upgrade that. Um, okay, so here's looking at the pressure, the other side of the pressure plate and the flywheel. Um, I have had some slippage issues with this. Um, the flywheel doesn't look as bad 
pressure plate looks pretty bad as far as all the burn spots in it. Um, and the disc itself was not worn as badly as I expected it to be. Um, I do believe though that I've had some uh, oil leaking, or well, it, every time I've had the inspection cover off, it's always looked wet inside there, so I'm not sure if I had oil coming from the back of the engine or coming from the um, hydraulic reservoir in the tractor. Um, we'll probably replace that seal too while we're in there. And of course, all the seals in this will get replaced. But Anyway, that's where we're at. That's where we're going to call this one. So if you're still here, thank you for watching. And... Uh, Hope you all have a good one.